This is Creative Banter. The Spandex Warrior and I sit down this week to discuss the trips we recently returned home from. For myself, that means my rainy trip to Acadia National Park in Maine. And for Ben, that's his trip to southern Utah with his wife. Both of which, it turns out, were filled with pizza. Much of the conversation revolves around small scene photography and the familiarity of place that is necessary to create such photographs to notice those intimate moments. We also talk a bit about the idea of doing something for the pure enjoyment of it, rather than getting sucked into the idea of having to make money off your passions. Let's dive right into it, shall we? got back from a trip and I I definitely want to hear about your trip and how that all went. But first I wanted to, uh, while I was on my trip, I I was listening to the last episode where I was talking about the experience of being on the backpacking trip and how it wasn't, it wasn't amazing, yet it was also quite productive from the standpoint of of taking a lot of photos. Mm -hmm. But there was one thing I, I failed to mention in that conversation which I think was was kind of the the important part of it. And, and maybe you were able to infer it based on just the way the conversation was going. Basically, I, I think the fact that it wasn't a extremely... Um, my, my experience in the field wasn't great. It was okay, but it wasn't great. It was a lot of work. But I think that's actually a very important part of my process, just from the standpoint that... I think that magic ingredient for taking photos, at least for me, is that little bit of misery because I think it really allows me to find subjects that I can more relate to because if I'm feeling a little bit overworked, feeling a little bit miserable in the field, I I think it allows me to take photos that perhaps have a little bit more, that are a little bit more meaningful in a way. And I, I think that's one one of the ways I've structured my trips is these these very concentrated efforts where I'm just kind of working myself to death, but they're also incredibly productive. But I think that magic ingredient is that that little bit of misery that allows me to produce the work that I'm very satisfied with. So that that was that last little bit that that I wanted to tack on to last week's conversation. And is, is that is that something that you can relate to, or or are you perfectly fine taking pictures if you're just feeling great, feeling happy, everything going well? I think I can relate it really to my trip to Acadia that I'm just coming off of, and I suspected there'd be a tie in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just finished up developing the film. I have the last four sheets uh, drying in the closet, and yeah, I mean, is this the same closet that you're in right now? Yes, they're behind me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're just surrounded by your film. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I ended the ended up canceling the or not canceling the trip, but um, cutting it short by a couple of days because just like we had when we were first up there, we got rained out ah, um, yeah. to the point where like everyone that we talked to who lives up there or like the waitresses and the people running the shops, they were all like, "This is so weird. Like we never get this kind of rainy." overcast dreary weather in june so i'm like oh yeah so clearly my girlfriend and i just bring that with us <laughs> you just brought all that weather with yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so it's it's not necessarily to say it was a miserable trip it's just that like as anyone who goes out camping especially would know it's not the most fun to be camping in torrential downpours or even a little bit of rain no because you're worried about your tent getting yeah. water in it uh, you're worried about just everything. It, it's just a weird experience. Yeah. So there is definitely, I can definitely relate to some of that like misery aspect. But it was also weird for me because like we were there from the 21st until the 28th. So pretty much seven days, say about six days worth of photography. The first mm-hmm. two days, we went to kind of revisited places that we had already been 
um, more of the popular areas, Jordan Pond and the Bubbles, and then um, Jessup Path and a couple other places, uh, the main lighthouse that they have at Bass Harbor. And then mm -hmm. the other days, we went to more of the quieter side of Acadia. I believe it's the west side. And that was a lot of more of like forested hikes up the mountains, that kind of deal. Was that an area that you went to on your last visit as well? No, no. This was pretty new to okay, uh, new to us. So went to this area, and that's when like the more dreary weather was hitting us. Um, so the first two days were beautiful, gorgeous, clear skies, that kind of thing. Not really what I wanted photographically, so I didn't really feel inspired. I was still kind of like. I was anxious, I guess is really what it comes down to. Um, nervous about the trip, yeah. nervous about how the conditions were going to play out for the rest of the week because we were watching the weather just to get an idea and uh, just wasn't in it. And it took me really until, kind of like you said, there was that added level of misery, so to speak, mm -hmm. which is really weird to to think about and, and attribute that to photography. But it wasn't until the weather started to turn sour that i was like oh now i'm starting to get into the flow like it's yeah it's crazy how that works it is yeah and I, I i question whether that stems back to the fact that i really got into photography around the time when i was becoming more aware about my mental health and depression and anxiety and using mm -hmm. photography as a way to heal and right now i'm actually doing a book review of Andrew Baruffi's photography, his Heal book. That's a very good book. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. We've been talking and we have a lot of parallels and I'm between our life and photography and all that. And as I'm reading through it, I'm just, that's been on top of my mind ever since he sent it over. It was on the top of my mind as well throughout this trip, which in a sense, I don't think really helped because <laughs> the for, for most of the trip, I was thinking about his work and uh, the fact that I know he uses now a Fuji GFX. Uh, he uses a 50R and the 50S mm -hmm. uh, camera systems, and which are gorgeous cameras and ones I would love to have. And <laughs> that was on my mind the entire trip too, which didn't help for me to actually free myself into that creative space. Yeah. So you have the the misery of being on the trip and like the anxiety around the trip as a whole lasting throughout this. And then on top of that, you're thinking, oh, do I want to go and switch over to medium format digital? Is that going to make my work better? Because you have Andrew's work, who's gorgeous and small scene and wonderful, and he's using this system. And I just got into this mix of feeling as though my work would be better using a different system, even though I know that's not the case. And it, it was just a yeah, weird... It's always the, it the was grass a weird is trip. greener sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So it made for a really weird experience while I was there. Not exactly ideal uh, headspace for me to be creating in. But I still came away with eight sheets of film and two rolls of six by seven. Uh, I figured that while we were at one of the places, I just took out the my RB67 and uh, mm -hmm. started photographing a little bit. I have some triptychs planned out that may work out. So that was kind of the idea with that. But overall, definitely a still a nicer trip than what it was the first time, at least photographically, because I mean, I have eight sheets versus 43. So yeah. that alone is an accomplishment, I think. And you'd mentioned that you had headed home a little bit early. How, how early did you head home? We headed home on Wednesday. We were supposed to be heading home on Saturday. So okay. yeah, about three days early, roughly. Um, and, and by then it was, was it just raining a lot at that point? And you're just like, this is, this isn't going anywhere. It was so like on and off. That was the problem was so we, we actually ended up checking out of the campsite, I think on, on Sunday. Uh, my girlfriend has family who lives right in Ellsworth, Maine, which is maybe a half hour from Acadia, not even. Mm -hmm. So they allowed us, they had an extra room and they are always looking for company and everything living up in Maine. Everyone else is kind of down in Pennsylvania, Jersey area. Yeah. So they were more than welcome to have us stay the yeah. next two nights and everything. So okay. we were actually able to sleep in a bed, which was nice, not have to worry about the rain and all that. Yeah. Um, but like Monday, I'm trying to think of what we all did. 
Monday, we went to Skudik Peninsula. That's when I did the triptych kind of thing. And as soon as we were driving into the actual like parking area, the roadway that goes into it, it started downpouring. And then it was mm. clear for like the rest of the day. And then still like cloudy, misty conditions, but, but not really downpouring rain, just a little bit here and there. And yeah. then Tuesday, we went into Camden, Maine, and then over to Belfast. And enjoyed the day walking around the those towns with really no rain at all so it was just it was it was weird like the conditions were constantly changing which brings about its own like anxiety of all right well if we decide to stay for longer how long is this weather going to last or these nice conditions how long are they going to last and if we go up for a hike well i don't want to be on top of a mountain while it's thunderstorm oh, yeah yeah <laughs> and have to worry about rushing <laughs> <Exactly>. down <laughs> like that, that that was my biggest worry is like we get up to these, we decide to hike this big mountain where 800 feet, 1,000 foot elevation and all of a sudden we start seeing lightning yeah. and I'm like, that, that was something that I didn't want to have happen. Yeah. So yeah, we left a little bit early. It's, I'm okay with it. It sucks, but at the same time, I'm leaving for Colorado in like two weeks, not even. Yeah. So now I've got other stuff planned out already. Yeah. So. so how do you feel about the images you captured? Have you have you had a chance to really uh, get a feel for them yet or anything? I know you mentioned that they're, they're you're surrounded by them drying right now, like you're in a kelp forest, you know, just with film everywhere. But <laughs> uh, how do you have any thoughts on on the images this early in in the game? Um, I'm happy. So when I when I develop my film after it comes out from the wash, I will like hold it up against like the white fridge or so and take a photograph of it with my phone just to get an idea of of it invert it yeah and i'm good with i'd say probably three or four maybe that's pretty good we'll see it's yeah. it's yeah it's kind of tough to tell right now because like i haven't truly sat down with them i haven't scanned them in to really get an idea of what they look like and yeah but uh there's let's see i think i have yeah i have two photographs that are kind of like the human elements liminal spaces kind of ordeal and then uh, the other six are more of intimate scenes. I have one of them that's what I'm considering like as quintessential Maine. It's just kind of like that. The pine trees with the misty uh, ocean view, rocky uh, beach kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that one scans through properly, that I was able to get everything front to back sharp because I have for the first first time that I've done it in a while at least foreground element that's very prominent and very close to the camera so I wanted to make sure that I could get that sharp so it was yeah. actually the first time that I used first time that I stopped down to f64 on oh. my oh, wow. lens that's 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 a lot for yeah. for 4x5 yeah i'm normally around 32 22 yeah. i think 32 is what i usually use but yeah so it looks sharp from what I've looked at on the negative, but it's hard. It can be deceiving, a little hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, it sounds like the, the trip went decent enough. Um, I mean, and, and I definitely know, I mean, like, like when you mentioned like the first couple of days of having like, you know, like the really good weather and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, some, sometimes when, when things are showing, going so good like that in terms of just like things are nice as far as camping stuff, you just kind of like, oh, it's, it's always going to be like this. And then something changes and it's like, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a major, major shift in that regard. Um, but I look forward to seeing the, the images. And it's also interesting because, you know, when in one of our past conversations, you had said, yeah, I'll probably take about eight photos or so. And, and sure enough, you know, you stuck right to it. Yeah. I took only three film holders with me, which definitely helped. Um, in hindsight, I could have just taken the four and not have taken any f additional film with me. But as they say, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. So um, the other nice thing that I did, and I actually, I think it definitely helped to prevent me from over photographing with a four by five was I was using the Ricoh like crazy. I, I don't know. I don't have an exact count of how many photographs I had taken throughout the trip with the Ricoh, but I was documenting a lot of just interesting f uh, flora and just interesting little things that I saw while out there, um, which is nice. It was cool. So I'm looking forward to perhaps throwing together a little ebook of that just as 
little project to work on. Do you think by having that camera and taking some of those pictures with that camera, it kind of like satisfied the curiosity that you might have otherwise taken out the four by five and taken a photo of something? Were there any situations where, where that may have been the case at all? Here and there maybe, but it's also hard to say because like a lot of it, when I was pulling out the Rico, it was very intentional. It was, I want to document this. Yeah. Or so a different mindset. This is a cool flower. Yeah, exactly. This is a cool flower that I want to learn the name of and I want to learn more about this place. So it's, as we had talked in previous episodes about more of a discovery of place kind of thing yeah. rather than a uh, photographic, this I want in my portfolio kind of photograph. So yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens with those. But Well, that's cool. Um, I mean, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad it wasn't like a complete bust, you know, that you're able to get some film uh, exposed and, and things worked out well enough and the weather held out long enough. Because I, I also know how it is when you're camping and when it's raining and then all the spaces just keep getting smaller and smaller and everything's wet and it's just, it's, it's, there's a novelty to it at first, but then especially when it's unpredictable and you can't really make plans yeah. around it. Um, that exactly definitely gets to be That's a bit That's the problem trickier. with the coast. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So while you were on that trip, my wife and I, we drove to Southern Utah and we stayed in the town of Escalante, Utah, which is a really small town. And it's an area that I pass through every year. I mean, for the past 10 years, I've been going backpacking in that general area. And it's the same area I passed through when I was on my recent trip. And I was looking at the calendar and uh, on our first full day there, it was, I had only been there 19 days prior. Uh, when I was there, the temperatures were in the mid 70s. Um, which was pretty nice, though in the desert that feels hotter just because you have light reflecting off all the, the bright surfaces and such. So I, I booked a, uh, a hotel in town, like the only hotel in town kind of, <laughs> and I just booked it out and I'm like, whatever weather we get, we get. And it was, it was in the mid 80s, but there's a lot of elevation changes to be had there. So you can go lower elevation, you can go higher elevation. And so we spent some time in Bryce and I was looking at it and the last time that my wife and I were in Bryce was like 16 years before. Wow. And we were just there for a day. We did, we did a hike or two and it was nice, but I never really felt inclined to return. But this time when we went there, it was quite fascinating because I think I've developed so much more as a photographer where I see so many more opportunities and more subjects and the small scenes and such. So I, I think it's an area I, might, I may return to at some point. Um, and also, um, there's a lot of uh, road cyclists out, you know, just dressed in their, their shiny spandex. Uh, and I got a little jealous oh, yeah. of that. So, um, <laughs> so, so I, 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 I'm like, oh man, if I just bring my bike here and if I bring the camera here, I could just spend some time, take some pictures, go on some, uh, some cycling adventure. So, uh, so that was cool. Just seeing things with a different perspective. And we drove over to yeah, Capitol speaking Reef. of that. Yeah. Oh, did you get, did, so, okay. Some people were threatening sending you uh, pictures of me in spandex. Uh, did, is, is this what you're referring to? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I figured so much. So, um, Every so often, I'll go on to my girlfriend's Instagram account just to keep up with some things here and there very yeah. loosely and happened upon yours and <laughs> happened upon your spandex photograph. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Dan White, who and him and I speak quite regularly, yeah. he texted me shortly after I had actually gotten off of her Instagram for the five minutes that I was on it. And... He was like, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. And he sent he sends a screenshot of your of your story yeah. with your other outfit for when you're feeling sassy. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. I, I like that one. That's actually uh, the, the most uh form fitting of the bunch. I actually it's it's quite comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I just love in that photo your your face looks rather painful yeah like just <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like should i really be posting this yeah but, it, it was kind of like the, uh, the look spandex of instant warrior. regret um but exactly uh, yeah but yes yeah, so I've, I've come to embrace the lifestyle so uh yeah 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 so i, I that's that's hilarious I, I was wondering if that would be the case and uh and uh sure enough 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, I, I may have to pack that when I go on some of my trips now. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, but uh, but yeah, we went over to Capitol Reef as well, which is about fifty miles or so in one way in one direction. Bryce was about fifty miles the other direction. Um, and and here's the cool thing. So uh, I took her on this on this scenic drive. It's it's a dirt road. Um, to a subject that I had photographed 19 days before. And maybe I'll, I'll post some uh, pictures over on the Discord. But there was this subject I photographed, and it'll be in the first of my um, first of my videos, which won't be out for another little bit. But it was this fallen juniper kind of surrounded by wildflowers. So I took a picture of it on my first, on the first day of my trip when I was having a little bit of the first day funk. And I'm just like, I just, I need to go take a picture right now. I need to kind of get over this first day funk because the next day was going to be the, the start of the backpacking trip. And so I, I just remembered being in just like this weird mindset when I was out there. I'm just in this, this uh, meadow uh, surrounded by these orange wildflowers and just really beautiful scene. Skies overhead. There had just been some thunderstorms that passed over. And I managed to take a photo that actually I really like how it turned out. Um, but then going back and revisiting that same scene 19 days later, and it was pretty much unrecognizable. Like all the flowers really? were just dead. They were dried. They were brown. Uh, somehow the, the wood of the tree even looked different, maybe because it had soaked a little bit of water in after the, the thunderstorms. And it was just fascinating to stand in my exact same footprints. I actually found my footprints. They're still there. But to think of like how I was feeling as I was walking through there and just to think back to what was going through my mind and then to like walk in those same footsteps again, uh, this time with my wife behind me and just going in and I took a picture of that same scene just with my iPhone. And I was also curious to see what kind of impact I had on that area because I was careful not to like, you know, trample wildflowers and stuff. And, and you could just see that the grasses had been like matted down a little bit where I had laid down my bag. But other than that, there was no real evidence of me even being there other than if you look really carefully to, to find a few footsteps in kind of the, the soft soil. Um, but I just thought it was, it was absolutely fascinating to see how dramatically that scene had changed in that short of time. And to realize that so often, I think when it comes to photography, it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. And we take for granted what we see around us, but then to realize that things change so incredibly fast and that we really should try to live more in the moment and to appreciate what we have surrounding us because things will change. And it was just, it was really fascinating to see the difference in that only 19 days meant, uh, uh, you know, only the difference of only 19 days on that scene. But it was, it was a good trip. It was a good trip. Um, lots of hiking. There was this really good pizza place in Escalante, which was a half block away from where we were staying. So we had like four pizzas. It was good. Um, and we were, and we were burning off all those, uh, those those calories with all the hikes we did <laughs> but it was it was really a fascinating experience and it was great to visit it without my camera without the expectations of photography just to experience it and the other thing I'll, I'll i'll mention on that is even though it hadn't been all that long since i was there it felt like it had been months it was it was it was kind of a bizarre experience the way that it all worked out yeah that's probably the biggest benefit i think of going back to places as we've talked about but it's fascinating how things change so quickly yeah it feels it's only been like you said a couple of days really a couple of weeks and already everything is drastically different than what it was yeah there was there's was another scene i photographed that had some wildflowers in the foreground and there are like these these tall stalks with these white flowers on them which ended up being fairly common throughout the whole area of southern utah i'd see them alongside the roads and such and uh, I just looked over where I'd taken the photo and like, I couldn't even see those flowers anymore. They were just, you know, dried out and gone. And, and so I, that was the other thing too, when I went on the trip, I was trying to focus more, well, when I went on my, my solo trip, I was trying to focus more on photographing the subjects that are more ephemeral and that would be kind of gone faster. And I think that's the other thing that's come with time is, is learning what, what sort of subjects to pursue now and then which ones you can kind of leave on the table for next time, which is always a, a factor when I go on my trips, always having some stuff to plan for. 
Um, but yeah, it was it was good. The weather was nice. We had thunderstorms one day. It was getting a little on the warm side, and there was one hike that I really wanted to do, but it wouldn't have been fun because um, the temperatures would have been pushing ninety degrees. Yeah, and it would have been an intense hike. So we're like, we'll we'll save that one for for heading back when we want to go back and load up on more really good pizza. <laughs> Yeah, we had some really good pizza on our trip too. We stopped at this little place and we ended up going into town so often because of the rain and going out to eat a lot more than what we had planned originally. Yeah. We stopped into Bar Harbor and got some really good pizza. And then a couple of days later, we planned on going back to this pizza place. But unfortunately, at that point, it was uh, it was closed for the day. Yeah. They do like that Monday, Tuesday or whatever it is that, that they're closed instead of being closed for the weekend when more people are going to yeah. be up there. So that was unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that was the other thing, like right along with those small scenes. And I think that's why I struggled more this trip, like photographically, was because I wanted to focus so much more on small scenes. And I'm kind of used to doing that around my area, but it, it's really tough to go up to someplace that's far away. Like you're driving these 10, 12 hours to spend a week in this beautiful location and when you start struggling to find anything to photograph you know that you don't want to want to try and resort to the grander uh scenes or in that uh place especially in the woodlands but you're unfamiliar with the area enough to know what really to look for for small scenes that i think yeah. that's really what it's uh kind of took the wind out of me a little bit and why I struggled initially so much until I really started to pick up steam a little towards the end of the trip. But yeah, I, I think when it comes to small scenes, it really does rely heavily on being familiar with an area because that, that's a tough thing to concentrate on if you're still just in the process of getting to know a place. So I, I can definitely see how that would be the case. Now, since that was one of your, your goals, how many of the subjects you found would be more the small scene type? Um, let me run through my behind the scenes photos that I take real quick and just get a basic idea. I think most of them. So we have two that are kind of the human element. Um, I'd say like three or four are would be considered more of like small scenes. Yeah. Still like everything is intimate. It's like yeah. even like the what I'd consider the quintessential main photograph that I took is still a small scene comparably to what I could have photographed. It's still focusing more on the small elements of it, uh more of like a snippet than a full view. So Yeah. Was was there anything in particular you found that was drawing your attention to those specific small scenes? Is it like I'm curious what your process was for identifying the subjects. Just how I usually go about it, I guess. It just photographing what calls out to me. I mean, we passed by a whole lot of uh, birch trees and just the bark on the on the ground, and I knew that I wanted to f find a composition with that because I love my birch trees, <laughs> and yeah, I ended up finding one where it's a it's a vertical composition, and with the birch bark, it's not just the, the bark itself, but it's also a rock that's kind of peeking out from some of the cracks of it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that that like, intersection between elements looked really nice, which is funny because while I was taking it, obviously I have this weird looking camera pointed at the ground and have a dark cloth under my head. My girlfriend's sitting on a rock reading a couple feet behind me, and two people come hiking down the hill. And they're, they like pause when they see me. And my girlfriend goes, no, no, you're fine. Like to make sure that they can still walk through because they wasn't sure yeah. what I was doing. And they said something along the lines of like, oh, is he looking like for birds or like, what, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's like, no, I think he's just taking a photograph of uh, like the birch bark or something on the ground. And you're like, oh, oh, okay. Like, what a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love <laughs> overhearing some of those conversations and like being a part of them sometimes. But, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it really the the draw was a lot of it was just what I usually do. I, I have one photograph that's of the waves crashing over rocks from from above. And it was just more of just exploring with 
outside of the forest and with subjects that I'm not truly familiar or comfortable uh, photographing. So cool. see what the what happens with that. See if uh, which one of those actually turns out and goes into my portfolio. Cool. Yeah, I look forward to to seeing the results on that. Um, so that that's always good, especially since it'd been so long since you'd been able to to get out on a trip. And now you're going to have a bunch of trips just all all stacked up. You know. And yeah, on we're, the, on the next we're one, doing preparation for Colorado. Like I said, I leave in about two weeks from now. Yeah. So we've got the uh, we got to do the oil changes for the bikes, uh, make sure that everything's good to go with those. I've got to clean mine. And then we just decided that we're, we brought down two of the four wheelers from the mountain house. And we're going to be bring, bringing those along with us as well, just as that way we can go on along some trails that we won't be able to get onto with the with a truck or uh, might be too too extraneous of hiking or too inaccessible hiking wise. So we'll do some some trips with that. But we've got two weeks that is going to be full of hiking and riding and photography and really looking forward to it. But also, of course, anxious towards it because what else is new? <laughs> so Yeah. The the hopefully the fact that you went on this trip recently kind of quells a little bit of that where you're like, all right, well, everything is going to be fine. You know, every, you know, everything will kind of work itself out and yeah. it'll be a different sort of trip. But, but I know there's always that sort of component to things as well. Yeah. Um, I just know that I really have to quell my desire to photograph everything and anything while I'm out there. Yeah. Um, and really just force myself to focus on the small scenes with the four by five. And if I want to take the photograph of the grandiose mountain range and all that then do it with a rico because it's i know it's not my speed with my portfolio anymore it's not the direction that i want to go into so just and i think that is only bringing three film holders with me again will definitely help with that and on, on a little bit of a different topic but still related to photography um on one of the days on our trip um i found this really beautiful old cottonwood tree and uh it's it was also like a campsite and no one was there, so we parked underneath it and made lunch there. And afterwards, we were just, you know, enjoying our time. It was, it was a nice day. It was like in the, the low 80s, a nice breeze. You have the, the sound of the cottonwood leaves above, you know, blue sky. It was just absolutely beautiful. And I was, I was there reading a book, and uh, my wife was, I think she was listening to some podcasts or something like that. And we're just enjoying our time there. And we wanted to go back there again later in the trip, but there was, there was someone there, but, you know, maybe next time. But the, uh, the book I'm reading, and, and I think I had mentioned this to you uh, before we started recording or after we were, we were recording. Uh, I don't know if that we mentioned it on the podcast, but there's, there's a, a book I started reading a while back uh, that was recommended to me by someone. I don't remember who had recommended it to me, but uh, called Born to Run, which is, I guess, a pretty popular book when it comes to like running culture and stuff. And it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one, and, and it's definitely, uh, I think I'm about 70 something percent of the way through it so far. It's absolutely fascinating and kind of along the same lines as Breath in, in some ways, um, which was an, another book a while back that we discussed. But there is one part about it that was quite fascinating and I think definitely relates to photography. And it was talking about how at some point, I think it was talking about American runners, but there was a point when uh, distance running, Americans were very good at it, but then they just kind of fell off and they weren't as good at it anymore. And something had happened and there, there's a variety of things, but the biggest sort of thing that attribute, was attributed to that was when it became about money. Mm -hmm. And so you have the athletes that in the past were running because they enjoyed it. And that is sort of one of the common threads in the book where some of these, uh, some of these cultures, it talks about these various cultures around the world, and it's just part of their lifestyle. They do it for pure enjoyment, and they're some of the best runners out there. But meanwhile, you know, as in sort of the, you know, the typical route in the, you know, capitalist society where you have, you know, money entering the game, and that becomes the motivation rather than for pure enjoyment then the actual performance starts dropping off. And it's definitely very, seems very similar to photography in a way where when people 
get into it and they are doing photography for the sake of photography, that is something where the quality of the work is going to be very, very high. But when it becomes doing things for money, that's when the motivations change. That's when the quality of the work changes. And I was thinking about this because my trip out to uh, Utah was still pretty fresh in my mind. And I was thinking about how even though it was had that sense of misery at times, which turns out to be a good thing, whenever I'm actually setting up the camera, I just go immediately into the sort of flow state. Like wh whatever it is that I'm thinking about in the back of my mind, it kind of disappears. It just go into that flow state. You do things. And even though I do this for a living now, one of my goals has been to keep it fun, keep it enjoyable, not to make it work as we've talked about here in the past. And so I think that's very much an important part of photography. And I really like that, the analogy of how that worked in the running world. Um, but there, there'll be all sorts of other absolutely fascinating discussions, um, I think, to be had from, uh, if you get a chance to, to read that book as well, to add it to your massive library of <laughs> books that are tumbling down from the bookshelves, throwing themselves at you saying, read me, read me, read me. Uh, but uh, but I think you'll you'll enjoy that one as well. Yeah, I, it's on my list. It's my ever growing list. I actually this past Saturday I went to a used bookstore, picked up twelve books, <laughs> and then the one of the Barnes and Noble uh, stores by me is going to be closing down for renovations. And of course, they're doing a 50% off sale of everything. Move that inventory, yeah. <laughs> and I ended up with another six books. I, I could have gotten so many more, but I had to had to tame myself a bit. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the lines for that were insane. People were standing in line. Someone mentioned, I don't know the, the veritability of this, but someone had mentioned that they were waiting in line for like four hours because it, it loops from the cash register, it went around the magazine racks and then back around a second time and then over. And it was, it was crazy. Wow. I, I didn't stand in line for that long. My girlfriend and I, yeah. I, I got six, six books. She got four. And what most people didn't seem to connect the dots with, but luckily we did after I'd stood in line for maybe like an hour. Uh, if you went up to the Starbucks, as long as you bought something from Starbucks, they could check you out still ah. get the discounts and all that so i'm like ooh, most people don't realize this and the few that do aren't telling anybody else because why would you yeah so, that's very yeah. clever yeah so it went i waited in line for an hour like a dummy and then <laughs> went over there waited in maybe 20 minutes just because of like not because of the line being long but because of the time it takes for them to make the drinks and all that kind of thing and yeah yeah and then got my books and left and meanwhile the people that i was standing in front of and behind were still maybe I don't know, 10 feet further along the line, five feet further along the line than what they were, not even. Yeah. But but no, going back to that, it's, uh, the running for pure enjoyment, I, I think that's with anything, really. And I think that's why so many for people sure. say that it's, yeah, you have, you have kind of like two sides of the coin with the turning photography or your passion into a, into a career. You have the um, do something that you love and you'll know, never work a day in your life kind of packed. And then on the other side of that, you have the people who are like, oh, no, you, you turn your passion into a career and you lose the passion for it because it, once you start focusing more on money, well, then you have to try and figure out how to make money off of it. And that's kind of the side that I experienced for quite a while, as again, we've discussed in the past. Yeah. And now I'm kind of at that point where like, yeah, I want to be making money off my photography. Yes, I want to be making money off my writing. But I know very, very well at this point that I'm not of the business mindset, of the marketing mindset. I want to do things how I want to do them. And what comes will eventually come. Um, yeah. And obviously still put my work out there, obviously still do some things here and there. But if I start to focus too much on the business and money side of things, it ruins it for me. And that's the yeah. same thing, like like you said, with running, the people start getting into it for the wrong reasons and you get into anything with the wrong reasons and it's just not going to be as much fun as it used to be for you. And then it could yeah. end up completely destroying your passion around that thing for good, where you'll never get that back. And now you're at a loss. 
So yeah, you have to go out of your way to go about things in a way to keep that sense of enjoyment out of it and keep that sense of wonder and, and keep all of that. So it's, you, you have to work harder in order to maintain that um, because simply just going down the path that everyone else goes down, going down the formulaic route of, you know, how do I make money out of this? That's, that's definitely, it's important to, to earn a living, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're walking this fine line and I think there's, you have to say no to a lot of things in order to stay on the path to keep the enjoyment from it. And, um, and so that's, that's definitely a, it's a difficult path, but it's, I think a very important one. And I think at the end of the day, you're, I know it's more of a Western thing, this whole idea of prioritizing happiness as a concept, but uh, it's it's paramount to to do that to prioritize your happiness and your love for what you are doing over anything else. I mean, there's plenty of jobs out there, even as what may, some may consider as low and degrading or whatever, as flipping burgers at a McDonald's that you can be doing to pay the bills. So if for someone like me, if you relate to that idea of I can't handle the business side of it right now, then don't. You don't need yeah. to. Like, there's nothing saying that you have to do photography for a living as much as you may want to, as much as it might drive you crazy that you can't. Yeah, try and embrace that passionate side of it and don't let go of it. Yeah, and if you play your cards right, you might be a middle-aged man wearing spandex riding a bike. Thanks and, for that. Uh, Picture just yeah. <laughs> popped back into my mind. <laughs> had, so if I needed to that today. Full, full circle. Just uh, yeah. You just bookend this with uh. With, Misery. Uh, with spandex. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our creative banter. You can learn more about Cody's work by visiting his website, codyschultz.com. And you can find my work at benhorn.com. For further discussion, join us at patreon.com slash creative banter it's a place where we can interact with you the listener and although we greatly appreciate those who contribute by joining a tier discussions are open to everyone whether you're a paying member or not thanks so much for listening and we'll see you around next time